Welcome to the MTR Network. Uh, we are back. It's been a whole 48 hours since the last time you <laughs> heard from us. Um, and uh, I'm Shanna. I am here with the doctor. Good morning. And we are going to discuss uh, Supergirl uh, 301, Girl of Steel, uh, which I actually, uh, I'm going to start off. You know, giving the writers some credit. Appreciated the title. Multiple meanings there. Put yeah. some layers behind it. I really, really appreciated the title. Because I got it right off the bat. You know, the emotional Girl of Steel uh, meaning. And then there was an actual physical statue. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was made of steel. <laughs> I, need, I need the Arrowverse to come up with. Yeah, I my first thought when they were like, "We have a statue unveiling today," I was like, "Another waterfront statue, interesting." (laughs) We destroyed as quickly as we did the black canary one that did not look like her at all. It was so ugly, and then (laughs) they unveiled it, and I was like, "So apparently, on Supergirl's Earth, they know how to make statues." (laughs) <laughs> because this one is actually cool I like not only did it look like Kara but it was a, a interesting statue it wasn't just like laurel weird misshapen shape <laughs> standing at the edge of the water <laughs> no and it looked like her but then her going into flight I'm like yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, no. It I, didn't look... That statue did not... The I only like good thing that. About it was, I like that it looked like she was flying. No, I didn't... I wouldn't have mind that it looked like she was flying if it didn't... It looked like... Her face was fine. It looked like her. The rest of the statue looked like... You Have you ever... You've been in Chicago? No. Okay, well, you've probably seen in, like, pictures of Chicago, there's this big metal object. It's an art piece. Mm-hmm in a plaza and if you look at your reflection in it it's a little distorted the middle of this statue looked like a reflection from that metal art piece in chicago yeah i got that it was but it's finished to me it was more of a what's the because it's like she's flying so to me it was more like the billowing cape effect of the statue that's what I I'm got sorry. from it. Like kind of like the wavy n- craziness that felt like it was just, it was supposed to be like her cape billowing. That's what I got from it. I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I know. Okay. I'm going to send you the picture of it. Of what okay. I'm talking about. Cause I always forget what it's called. Even though I grew up, grew up outside of Chicago, but I know it when I see it, cause everyone goes to take a picture with it. <laughs> Uh, okay there it is and what were your overall thoughts on the episode so on first on first watch i'm like yeah kara i like that though see okay i'm looking at the statue i like that though like i like that statue i would have preferred that kara's the body of kara's statue not look like that oh see i, I like that <laughs> to me it gave the effect of her flying okay go on <laughs> <laughs> art is subjective um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i'm sorry um so on first watch i'm like damn kara lighten the hell up girl you don't do this. Don't be the trope. Like, I'm going to become this hard, angry woman because my man left. And <laughs> as she gets, <laughs> like, calm the fuck down. And, and then she started to explain it more. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. You know, she feels like because she was able to make that choice and she would always make that choice. I don't know. I, I got the sense that maybe she was kind of also blaming her, blaming herself, but mm-hmm. trying to repackage it in like I'm strong enough to make this choice that means I have a cold heart and I'm not human I was like that's not what that means it means the very opposite yeah on second watch I appreciated more on the first watch I'm like damn dude was I was about to say something crass I'm gonna say I was like was the penis that good that we had like this I mean I know Chris is cute but come on no (laughs) you know what I mean he is really fine um you you know what it reminded me of actually um 
in reflecting on it. Have you listened to the latest Queen Sugar podcast from? No, because I haven't watched the episode okay. yet. I'm I'm dragging. There's got there's been a lot going on in the world in my world, so yeah. I got some catching up to do this week. <laughs> um, so there's a particular scene with a character on this week's episode. By the way, listen to the upcoming Queen Sugar podcast on Podcast Fandom. I will be co-hosting that episode. Um, <laughs> so I there's a <laughs> there's a particular character on that episode. Where the character says something, and initially I was like, oh, how he going to come out his face and say that? He know that's not true. And Leslie made a really good point of like, I don't think he was saying that because he actually believed it. I think he was saying that because he was trying to avoid dealing with it. And I think like after thinking about it later, I was like, Oh, like Kara's like whole like I'm always gonna be that choice. I'm I'm always gonna make that choice. I'm not not human. I'm a alien. I think that was really her being like, I don't want to have this conversation with you, Alex. I've decided that this is who I am, and I am, you know, deflecting by telling you that I'm not there, human. There was that, but I also feel like it was a way of insulating herself from the yeah. hurt. Mm-hmm, exactly that's what I'm saying like she she wanted Alex to go away mm-hmm. and so she's like I'm I'm not this you know this is not me anymore and then also it's like I need to continue to wallow in this and you guys are trying to pull me out of it and this is the place I want to be in right now um because I really like how immediately talking to John she mm-hmm. kind of broke but, but that's because, you know, and I'm pretty sure I'm, I love John because <laughs> he could have been like, lady, all my people dead. What you crying? Because your boyfriend is somewhere out there. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> but no, I love that. And it made sense that she was able to reveal that to him because he's an alien, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like, I'm not talking to another human who I've already sacrificed so much for, have gotten treated like shit for. And I'm making these hard, terrible choices that, but here's somebody who has maybe lost on a greater scale, but knows what it's like trying to be human in this world where you're not really human and you're not a hundred percent accepted. Not really. Mm-hmm. They idolize her, but do they really accept her? And see, and that's what I mean. This is what I wanted. This is what I talked about in the preview episode. I really wanted us to talk about whether or not we're really accepting of these aliens, how society mm-hmm. feels. I, yeah. I want to get into all of this. I hope the writers can take it there. I really hope because I think it'll give their show a level of depth that the, it hasn't had up to now because I feel like they've dabbled in it. They've touched on it. Like even, you know, I, I think... David has alluded to it in his um, interviews and stuff. He's like, oh, I really like it when we start getting into like what it means to be alien and making that a metaphor. And he's like, as a black man, that resonates with me. They need, they can take it there. They could if they think about it. Yeah. And I, I appreciate it. <clears throat> I also appreciated this turn because they, I was like, finally. After three years, give my girl something to work with. Melissa can act. Mm -hmm. And you gave her something to work with. You gave her being hard and cut off. But you also gave her being soft and vulnerable and emotional. And it wasn't flighty and it wasn't fickle. It was it was adult. It was mature. And I'm like, fine, fucking Lee. Yes. More of this. Yeah. I loved. Okay. I love the opening scene with her and um, Manel and her mother. And not that because I knew. I want that white dress. Oh, it's gorgeous. Not just because <laughs> I knew she was dreaming. Like, obviously, I knew she was dreaming. Open. <laughs> like, it's like clearly she's dreaming. We're using like Barbara Walters soft focus. But. <laughs> oh, no, I thought that was a Sybil Sh- Shepherd Moonlight and soft focus. <laughs> Sorry, simple. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what got me is when they cut and you realize that she's flying. Mm. And it's like she is. 
I mean, there's like wallowing and then there's like, I'm a superhuman alien. So I'm flying above the city and I'm still like in deep my in my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> it looked awesome. But can we talk about something real quick? Mm-hmm. I like Erica Durant. She was Lois on Smallville. She does not look old enough to be Kara's mama. She, she is not old enough to be Kara's mother. She's only 39 years old. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like they're doing my girl wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see her like this. I mean, I love this. Like, they call it, they call it legacy casting. Um, mm-hmm. I love it. I think it's great that they found a place for her just like Laura Vandiver and you know I'm I'm hoping they'll get Tom Welling in there I know he's on Lucifer right now um but yeah her mother no yeah. no she looked like her big sister big sister at best <laughs> like a younger bestie aunt. yeah like like if the grandparents had a late in life child maybe <laughs> or like you know I, like I would like her to like maybe like Samantha to her carry on like sex in the city like a slightly older bff like a god i would even give you godmother at this point godmother okay we've had some i don't even know because i don't even know she would be her mother's best friend like (laughs) in in my head canon i've invented this kryptonian tradition where you find the youngest cousin in the family and that person is the godmother because they're the person most likely to outlive others (laughs) so that's my whole head canon but mother i i was like i saw that cast i was like oh eric i was like wait mama and then i was like wait she she's not and you know what's interesting? So I just decided to Google it because I was like, let me find out what the former actress's age is. Um, so Laura Benanti, who used to play Allura, uh, is actually just 38. But oh, for sake. So she's younger than Erica. But there's something about Erica's face. Erica has a very a young face. face. And Laura doesn't... I'm not saying Laura looks like like old as shit. I'm not saying no, she, she, but she looks like she, but the, the angles of her face, she could play older or younger, depending on how you mm-hmm. light her, how you cast her and how she performs. Exactly. And I don't know. I just, I bought her as Cara's mother more than Erica. Um, yeah, that's funny to me. Cause that was the other thing. Uh, sorry to bring up queen sugar again. I've just, you know, been in that mode. Um, the actress that plays Kiki on there, the um, Micah's girlfriend. So they had like a scene where they were talking about whether or not they were going to have sex. And I got uncomfortable because I know the actor that plays Micah is 23 in real life. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, how old is this girl? Because she looks uh, about 17. I was like, I hope they never have a sex scene <laughs> because I feel uncomfortable. And then somebody was like, oh, no, the actress that plays Kiki is 27. And I was like, 27 where? <laughs> like, she's one of those, like, you know, I, her career is going to be very long because right now she is 27 <laughs> looking all of 17. <laughs> uh, she She's going to, like, when she's 39, she's not going to be playing someone's mother. Like, it's just not going to happen. Right. Because <laughs> she looks about five. <laughs> so <laughs> Erica Durant, I think she's just always going to have that face where she kind of looks like a teenager or like in her mid twenties. Yeah. So yeah, that was the only thing, but I love that the opening, like I said, I get the stuff that gets me is the emotional stuff. And mm-hmm. right off the bat, they set the tone of like, Car is in her feelings. Mm-hmm. And everybody catching L's and catching metaphorical hands because of it. Yeah. I, mean, cause she blew, I mean, she blew up Jimmy. She blew up everybody. Her own sister. Like, fuck Kara. It's like, Kara done saved me. So it's fuck Kara now? How that work? Yeah. <laughs> It was it was uh, it was so messed up. Um, the thing that we talked about in the preview that I love, like, I mean, I felt like so some of the stuff we were clearly like wrong on with our theories, <laughs> but then other stuff was like happening almost exactly like we said. I was like, I really want to see more action stuff from Alex. Open up the thing, Alex hanging out a, a car, shooting out at people. <laughs> it's like, 
I was like, yes, yes, they are giving me what I asked for immediately. <laughs> like, I was so excited. Um, Alex and Maggie, so they have to wrap that up. Cause I know. I hope it's not a left at the altar thing in Maggie Lee's, although I feel like that's where they're headed. Well, I'm wondering what's it going to be because the way they framed it in this episode was that it wasn't Maggie that was hesitating. It was Alex. Right, but I don't know so, that. I, but I feel like they might pull a reversal because, you know, yeah. Maggie gets in and then she gets scared because of her home life and her own baggage and then she withdraws mm -hmm. and then she gets in and then she gets scared. So I'm wondering if it's like, yeah, she wants to marry her and all of a sudden now, oh, shoot, I'm so sorry. Um, She's going to freak out and leave. Yeah, that, I was just they're not killing off based on that um interview you got. So oh, yeah. she's, she's going to be and they said recurring. So, so yeah, she's coming back, but I just feel like either she's going to freak out and leave or she's got to take a job or an assignment and leave. That's what I thought. And I thought it would actually be really smart if they make her work for the president, because it feels like the president is going to be closely tied to this season because it was like thing you can bring her in and out as you bring in those characters. Um, but I was... I was just surprised because I thought if they were going to be laying the groundwork for the breakup, I thought it would come from like, oh, we'll plant some hesitation on Maggie's part. And the fact that they instead made it Alex who was hesitant. I was like, oh, this is again, trying to give them some credit. Maybe, you know, we're we're moving towards a little a little depth, a little subtlety. <laughs> I, I really appreciated it. You know um, that sounds like mad condescending, right? <laughs> I'm just being honest. They have not. They have not. This show has been decidedly unsubtle from the beginning. No. <laughs> like they're like, here is our. Here is the lesson you are going to learn by the end of this hour. <laughs> and we're gonna and we're gonna plot it for you as if you're like a five year old and we're we're laying out <laughs> all the steps to get there. Um so I was like, okay, all right. Um and then I thought that Alex's reason for being hesitant then made sense. It's like, you know, my dad is not gonna be there. My mom is probably you know, like just feeling like <clears throat> she's finally in this place to have these things she wants and the people that she loves. I thought it was, she was also going to say Cara, like what Cara is going through right now. Like I can't fully be happy and appreciate this moment. Mm, I can see that. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of Dean Kane, I just want to make sure that, okay. okay. Problematic Dean Kane. <laughs> okay. I thought this was something new. Um, but it doesn't look like it is. Okay. <clears throat> um, so <laughs> I was on the Twitters and someone <laughs> posted a picture of this movie called Vendetta with Dean Kane and the big show from WWE. <laughs> And I'm like, well, maybe that's why we won't be seeing Jeremiah. He's doing movies with the big show. Uh, <laughs> it won't. Yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't look like it was, oh, it was. Oh, OK. It was a couple of years ago. So, OK, never mind. <laughs> I was just like, OK, I guess that's, that's what we're doing, now, <laughs> which is fine. Because some of those WWE movies, I mean, they're not Oscar winners, but they're highly entertaining. Yeah. I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm, I, if you say so. <laughs> I enjoy them. They are not good, but I enjoy them. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, the other thing I really, really liked, and I feel like for all of the news that came out about Supergirl, nobody told me Adrian Pastar was going to be on this season. General Talbot without the douchey mustache. <laughs> First, Adrian Pastar. To me, when I think of a sci-fi fantasy superhero, they, like you got to have Adrian Pastar on. How how do you not? <laughs> he is <laughs> the king of this shit. I just when I saw him, I I was like literally like Adrian Pastar. I was like so excited. <laughs> I was like, how did I miss this piece of casting news? Right. They kept this one under wraps. <laughs> 
I love and him. You know, you know, for the next, I know his name is Morgan Edge, but I'm I'm just gonna be calling him General Talbot. You know that, right? <laughs> Ridiculous. So I looked up Morgan Edge. Um, so he is a longtime um, Superman villain, known specifically for buying the Daily Planet to try and sway the media, um, and and put out stories about Superman that he wanted to put out. So. Um, totally keeping in line with exactly who his character is from the comics. I had never heard of him before. Um, and I, I don't like, I'm, I, this was not what I was expecting at all when they said shake up that cat co. <laughs> Me either. Like, so apparently Callista is definitely staying recurring. She's staying in LA. Yeah. Uh, which is, you know, I, I get it. Teen kid. Trust. Trust. Yeah. I understand that. Well, I knew, I think we knew she was coming back as the press secretary. I had just forgotten it. Mm-hmm. But I think there was like an, uh, like they did like kind of an announcement or something like that, or they showed her. I love um, all the scenes of her shading Trump, basically. <laughs> Trump, those flat earthers. <laughs> I love Everybody it. Everybody got some shade this episode. <laughs> I love it. And yes, keep just throwing that in the background. <laughs> please, please do that. Um, I loved uh, Cara leaving him on top of the shipping crates. Oh, and quoting him like, you have all of my attention. Like, yes, girl, let him know. Tell him about himself. <laughs> I love Cara too because, again, the, the fact that nobody's figured out she's super girl is so ridiculous. Because she's <laughs> literally like, she's like, uh, I'll talk to you later, Lena. Two seconds later, here comes Supergirl. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to be in the neighborhood. I know. I just have to be flying around and then knew that you were here. <laughs> Can we talk about the fact that when she pulled that sub out of the ocean, <laughs> I watched it last night. I put this on Twitter. She looked like if there wasn't an audience, she sure would have thrown that shit into the sun. <laughs> oh, she was done. She was so done. She was- over it oh she, my god that, the, oh. like the water dripping down her face she was like Ugh. she even kind of looked at the people like i'm so tired of saving you bitches <laughs> <laughs> she's like i'm tired i want to be left the fuck alone if i could throw this shit into the sun and get away with it i, w- I would do it in a minute while y'all gotta be here staring and gawking and clapping <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kara, Kara is both. She's like the only place I find success is Supergirl, and I'm also so done, <laughs> so <laughs> over it. Um, what was the other big? Oh, Rain. I'm like, oh, Rain. <laughs> I, I'm hoping we're getting what it looks like. I'm like, yeah, she doesn't know who she is. Yes. Okay. But I feel like we're also getting a little bit what I was talking about. She has a strong connection to Earth. She has a yes. daughter, which also she don't look old enough to be that child's mama. What did she have that baby when she was 12? Um, <laughs> she has a daughter. OK, so this probably won't pan out to be my a real theory. My hope is that that's another one of the world killers. Her daughter. Well, that's what I'm wondering. I was like, is this her biological daughter? And then what does that mean in terms of what powers her daughter might have? Mm -hmm. And then also um, in terms of, uh, you know, or maybe is it like, uh, is she married and it's an adopted daughter? Like either way. Anything. But yeah, yeah, there are five world killers and they actually came looking for Supergirl. Mm-hmm. Because there are things that they know about Supergirl that Supergirl didn't even know about herself with re- with regard to power levels and abilities and purpose and stuff. So I'm like I'm I'm wondering it, it might not pan out. They may not go that route. They, but when I see them pulling in from that Supergirl run that I like, I'm like, Ooh, is this one of the other ones? Please say it's one of the other ones. I would love it if this is one of the other ones. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I I mean I would love. I just I want to see all of this her her connection what it means for her to find out what her powers are or whatever and then her connection to earth cuz she seems if that if that daughter is like completely human that should be interesting cuz she 
I mean, she went full mama bear. And I loved it too, because in that situation, people would just think like, oh, that, that mother instinct, crazy strength. Right. Yeah. That just kicked in. And she's yeah. like, nah, you don't be just like crushing full metal, metal bars. <laughs> Because lifting the bar is one thing, but crushing it, that's what threw her. Like, because you hear stories about, you know, tiny women lifting entire ass cars off their children because the adrenal, adrenaline rush was so strong. It's like, fuck that. I'm saving my baby. But it's different when you've bent the metal. And even her daughter peeped that she bent the metal like, whoa, mom. Yeah, like, <laughs> that was a moment I was like, oh, girl. <laughs> like, you went full, full rage. And then also the, um, the parallel dream at the end yes that was really great yes. sorry i was I, so late for this storyline that was great i thought because i thought it was Kara dreaming i was like why is she having these kind of nightmares about her mom and then it was rain waking up and i was like "Ooh, even better <laughs> yeah i love it i love it um the james and Kara stuff let's discuss Okay, so apologies. I got so furious when I heard I'm working with my best friend. Finally, I attributed it to Kara. It was not Kara. Shanna confirmed that for me. So <laughs> I'll back my rage and my fury that I had had. Yeah. Because I, <laughs> I was just like, but she I didn't still say didn't it. appreciate Look, y'all going to get y'all shit together with how y'all talking to these black men on this show, though. I know that much. Oh, I mean, yeah. But that's who they are. Um, yeah, because it was just my issue is just how she went zero to a hundred on Jimmy real quick, and I get what they were going for. Um, and to be fair though, Jimmy, you, um, Jimmy ain't blameless. He shouldn't have used the device. Oh yeah, but I think that was literally like he's like, I have to, you know, go big or go home. Like I have to shock her into doing something, you know, or or facing this, dealing with this. So I got why he did it. Well, here's the funny thing about it though, because okay, I know earlier they seemed to be talking fine, and she was fine talking to him about work and stuff, mm -hmm. and then he tried to pry, and then that's when she kind of shut it down. Do you want me to drink? Or do you want me to write? Which I get it. I've already made clear I don't want to talk about this shit. I will talk to you when I'm ready. If I'm ready, stop pushing. But before that, when they were walking in, they were talking to each other just fine. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you might just need to let her... You know what? I believe in leaving people alone. But at the same time... And she wasn't being, she wasn't being destructive. The opposite. She was being super hella... There's something <laughs> destructive about burying yourself in, in your work. And so I, I think... They were all trying to push her. They all rec like recognized that like it was time. So I felt like Alex pushed in her way. Jimmy tried to push in his way. And the whole scene with Alex happened because of what happened with Jimmy and him being like, yo, you need to go talk to her. Mm -hmm. So I feel like they were all trying to push in their way. Maybe his way wasn't the best way. Um, but I, I love the scene between the two of them. I wish... There have been another scene because like we said, what one thing that has really been missing in that relationship since season one was how he would help her come to these conclusions. Like it, it's like the three main people who would really help Kara in terms of like dealing with whatever she was feeling were mm -hmm. Alex, Jimmy and John. And we got that this episode. Mm -hmm. she had the scene with John she had the scene with Alex she had the scene with Jimmy I just wish based on how her scene with Jimmy had ended that there had been a, a second scene mm. to kind of resolve that anger or tension because like the, the scene with Lena implies that she's going to go back to Catco I would have loved to see something with her and Jimmy and, you know, and I know they probably used her showing up the bar and chuckling it up. Mm -hmm. That was the one thing that bothered me the most. I'm like, you don't have to draw it out another 30 minutes with apologies. But and I, I mean, she didn't even snap on Alex the way she snapped on Jimmy. Yeah. So like if that's your you have established these two have been friends for three years, for three seasons. The least they could have done was given us a two minute scene of them interacting and her sincerely apologizing. Because I'm going to say it. 
that's some white that's some white woman shit like oh i'm just gonna show up and we're just gonna pretend like everything's okay because i'm laughing and you're just gonna forgive me no you need to apologize Mm mm-hmm you need to apologize. That's some 53% white woman shit right there. Yeah. I, yeah, I just wish there had been, like, just a, a little bit of resolution to that scene with Jimmy. Because I, like, the way she I was, like, way harsh, Ty. Way harsh. <laughs> like, <laughs> you really went off on my mans. <laughs> like, zero to okay, 100. did not apologize. Yeah. I was, like, I'm, like, he's been through some things, too. I need, I need care to be a 47% white woman when it comes to Jimmy, not the 53% one. Come on, girl. You can do it. The thing that we never, because I don't know why it just, I finally looked this up. Um, so I just looked up the Guardian character from the comics Mm -hmm. I never looked it up before so apparently Guardian's first appearance was in a Jimmy Olsen comic even though Guardian was not Jimmy Olsen he was another character called um I don't know why comic book characters always have these long they have like a first a middle a nickname and a last name um his name was basically (laughs) the serial killer name (laughs) exactly his name is James Jacob Nicknamed Jim Harper. <laughs> I don't know why. Do you really need nicknamed Jim when most people know that James's nickname is Jim? Yeah, it's just weird. Um, and the nickname a- for James is Jim. We know <laughs> everyone knows that. Um, and it's a character that actually was created by uh, Jack Kirby. Okay. Which I thought was interesting because usually you know Jack Kirby from Marvel stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was he was resembles originally Captain America Hmm. which I thought was interesting he has this kind of yellow and blue uh, suit with a yellow shield Mm -hmm. and apparently he was also I think later retconned to be or later revealed to be the uncle of Roy Harper Speedy Hmm. so that it's kind of a deep cut character. I didn't realize that it was based on a comic book uh, character from DC, um, but yeah, it's kind of a deep cut character, and I'm hoping that we get more development of Guardian. That'll be interesting to see if Car and Jimmy continue to clash over the Guardian thing, or if they're relationship at catco suffers like like which relationship works i guess my thing is this can it suffer any more than it already has the show has decided to commit itself to destroying that friendship and that i will say that is the one thing that will probably always be a prickle in my side yeah because it was such a a wonderful and i i get it because they were also trying to build this this tension of like, will they or won't they in the first season, but there was also a genuine friendship there. And Mm -hmm. I, I, I miss that. I miss that a lot from their characters. Yeah. (sighs) Mm, Okay. I'm like, I'm just like, "Mm." (laughs) right. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) So, trying to think anything else that we want to talk about in this episode we didn't really do a scene by scene or anything like that but i don't know that we need to though you know this um trying to think did we miss anything morgan edge we talked about him a little bit yeah Uh, i think he's just gonna be a thorn in their side type of thing i'm wondering when we're gonna get lena's heel turn I have no idea. Like at they this are point, it. yeah, I, I, I honestly have no idea because I feel like um, if Lena hasn't figured out that Kara is Supergirl, uh, then she's dumb. If she has, she's playing it close to the vest. If she's playing it close to the vest, this is the long con. This is the longest of cons. <laughs> um, and if that's the case, that means that her heel turn is going to be crazy ridiculous it's just it's it's going to be really intense and like come out of nowhere so yeah I just I I honestly don't know when we're going to get that because right now also I think 
I think it's hard because I want, uh, I want them to be friends. I really like their friendship. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, I just don't know because I do, I really want them to be friends. I want them to continue to be friends. Their friendship is actually really endearing. Um, but I don't know. Cool. You ready for the feedback? Yeah. Okay, so, oh, and just as an FYI, I posted this in a group, but if you guys, I put the, I, people need to be in the group to leave feedback, so if you could not share that outside of the group, the posts we put in the group, that would be great, thanks. So, Joseph Seltzer says, hello ladies, a few quick hits. Kara is so much more likable when they write her as an adult. I love Lena, never thought I'd say that. It's going to make the eventual separation between her and Kara that much sweeter. John could have done something besides give a book. A botched CW pep talk. Whoever is designing these statues needs to go out of business because they are hoard. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I love this statue. The Laurel statue was trash. It looked like a a horrible, like cheaply constructed made of brass. I don't like it but this one I liked. I really liked this. I love I was like, oh wow, a statue unveiling. I can get behind. I don't <laughs> I enjoyed it. We're going to let you have it. Uh, <laughs> nice to see we meet Rain for the first time. Her fall is going to be precipitous and painful. Um, Chris, sorry you missed the show. Hopefully you can catch it on the CW app. You'll have just as many commercials as if you watched it live. So you will not have missed a thing. Uh, Amani. No, he meant missed it like I missed it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm slow. Sorry, Chris. Yeah, yeah. I was a little ambivalent because I was just like, I was feeling so meh. And I don't know why I started, started the year feeling. I do know why I started the year feeling so mad about TV shows, but that's a different discussion. Uh, yeah. Okay. Strong start. He liked it. Woohoo. Amani. So Kara just going full 53% this season. Yep. That's what I just said. Didn't apologize or nothing. Uh, for, just put on her pink pussy hat like she hadn't gone into the Trump booth and pulled that lever. I'm sorry. Whew, okay. First of all, how are you going to fix your lips to talk to your boss and best friend like that? Thank you. Even if it wasn't her best friend, that's still your boss girl. I and mean, I feel- well, I, she, she ended it with quitting. So I, I think that is how you talk to your boss when you're about to quit. <laughs> Um, and I, in my head canon, because I do like Kara, I'm trying to rewrite it in my head to say, well, she knew she was about to get her ass fired when, you know, when you go too far and you're like, look, I got to come out on top because I'm about to lose my job. So yeah. I'm, just gonna- <laughs> I'm saying I like, I don't know if I've ever had a boss that was like that bad, but I think everybody has that fantasy of just at your job, you're, you know, you're done you're about to quit and you just burn all the bridges. <laughs> you just, pump it all. <laughs> just all of them. I was at Dallas car in that moment. She was like, I am not here for it. And guess what? You don't even have to fire, <laughs> fire me because I quit. <laughs> you're lucky you got to quit and not have your ass fired on the spot because child, you were testing that man with snapper gone and cat being the, fr- Oh, you know what? I'm actually kind of glad snapper is gone. Yeah, I did in retrospect because actually I thought that uh, fake Latina they had browned her up and I got pissed, so I had to go back and watch uh, episode three from season two when she first got introduced. I'm like, okay, she's always been that brown. I don't know that they're I don't they might still be browning her, but no browner than she was. And watching Snapper, then I was like, why did they even bother with him? He was the worst. So I'm actually kind of glad he's gone. I think it was also there was just this weird thing where because i had so many jokes on jimmy this episode where he's like gotta run the business i'm like you acting like you've been around running this shit why are you pretending <laughs> and so i think that was the thing that was weird about it was you had snapper coming in as this mentor for Kara, and he's clearly this seasoned veteran reporter but somehow jimmy is the one running catco even though he's never there so, because at the end of the day, he's the one that Kat left in charge. Yeah, but it was just, it was like this weird thing where you're like, the only time you ever saw anybody really interacting at CatCo was uh, Snapper and Kara. 
because Jimmy's running around being guardian and not doing his job at CatCo. And then whenever he would show up, it was just to pull rank on Snapper. Mm-hmm. So it just it felt weird. It felt like Snapper should be the one in charge. Yeah, so, yeah that's a good point. Yeah. Um, and Kat being the first credible press secretary I've seen in 2017, I thought we might actually get Jimmy an active storyline this season. But then Lena comes through with the boss move and Kara just forgets her to apologize to her friend and boss who she quit on, but will text her. Yep. Mm-hmm. And she's excited to finally work with her best friend. See, Imani, you read it like I did too. Okay, okay. But we, we heard it wrong. Because we were in our feelings and we were seeing red. Okay. Uh, so we're just acting like the last two years working with Jimmy didn't happen. Y'all already pretended them as a couple didn't exist, but come on. John had to check her privilege and remind her she just said goodbye to a boyfriend. He escaped a, slave- <laughs> he escaped a slave camp where his entire race was being tortured and he saw his family die. Buck up. Fake Maxwell Lord was hateable enough. And I'm looking forward to a more adult care this season. But I really need a misty night to level her out. <laughs> Yeah. Michelle. Uh, sh- okay, I'm going to sh- Shabihi. Sweetie, if you can, if I probably brutalize that. So if you can give me the phonetics of your name for the next time, I'd appreciate it because I-, I hate getting people's names wrong. All right. This episode was hot garbage. It started poorly and ended poorly. Kara keeps sta- starting every season stating what she wants, then actively being the exact opposite. She had the nerve to flash on her sister, who always supported her, who is preparing to be married. Flashed on her friend and boss, Jimmy, who was trying to keep the multinational company together. They really want me to stop watching the show. Wait, I forgot. Why was John standing around? Did they skip on the FX budget or something? It was very disappointing, except when Alex asked him to walk her down the aisle. She knows who her real father is. Um... You know what? Because it it's interesting you said that because he said he was going to go shore up the building and then we never see him do that, which I guess is fine. I didn't even think about it till you just said that. It could, it might be a budget thing. Maybe they put all that money into the underwater pieces. Yeah. Could be. Yeah, that's to me more what it seemed like. Um and then her lifting the sub out. I feel yeah. like they put that 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 and then that chase at the beginning like the beginning action sequence and then that sub battle, I feel like they put more of their money towards that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't need to see John become Martian Manhunter. Because we, we know what's going to happen. We He's already yeah. told us what he's about to do. Um, and this, is, this isn't this is like a penultimate episode or the final, the final episode where we need to see all the action and everyone doing everything. So it was cool for me. I thought it was fine that we didn't see it. And I assumed it was budget. Yeah. Martian Manhunter is a completely CGI character. That's not cheap. Yeah. I, I do t- also, you know, it's a 22 episode season. They can't blow everything in the premiere, especially not. It's like a weird thing to um, first. I found this out because of The Walking Dead. As your seasons go on, your budget for things actually gets smaller. They really? they figure it. It can go both ways depending on the network. But usually what they figure is that you have become adept at doing it and you can find ways to do it more cheaply and more efficiently. So they don't, your budget doesn't necessarily go up. It's just that your team becomes better at doing it quicker and for less money. Unless you're walking dead. I'm not walking dead. The game of Thrones. And yeah. you said you all the money to go out on a bank. We getting all the dragons. Yeah. yeah. Game of Thrones is just out here. Just being extra. <laughs> 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 we're getting all the dragons and ghosts going to be in all the episodes and we might get some Nymerian ghosts in the episode with a couple of dragons all that the meeting John is having <laughs> sorry I listened to that uh, script leak episode again the other day <laughs> to Edmure that was promised oh my god um, I swear to god if that happens I will burn everything to the ground <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh um but yeah i i didn't i honestly didn't think about at all like where is john during this scene <laughs> i'm not gonna lie i was just like he told us what he was doing yeah, I didn't, that's all i needed I, to know i like honestly didn't think about him at all i was like oh car is about to you know figure out this i really loved um it, it was so cheesy but she was just like it's not for high altitude it's for low altitude and then it's like you know, quick camera cut to like going underwater and you realize they're in the submarine. I was like, this is so cheesy, but I kind of love it. <laughs> and then we, 
<laughs> you know what? I did fuss about this. I'm like, okay, so Kara can't breathe in space. She can't breathe underwater. Where the fuck can she breathe? <laughs> On Earth, like us. <laughs> like, Listen. <laughs> I mean, she obviously, she can't breathe underwater, but she clearly can breathe longer underwater than people Hold her breath longer yeah so and then we had monel with the dap wake up school day scene <laughs> oh yeah yeah <laughs> it was the same filter and everything the lighting if you look at that scene the filter the lighting it was all the same <laughs> okay so <laughs> uh theory time okay. did you think that they were implying that that was did you think they were saying that that is a voice in her head or that that is actually mono somewhere? I feel like that's a voice in her head. Okay. But I also feel like it's a dual message that you are so focused, but the fact that she and Ka- um, Rain shared essentially the same dream, mm-hmm. I feel mm-hmm. like it's also a message like there's, <laughs> you're not alone. Something dangerous is coming you can't be so singularly focused on being Supergirl and dealing with this small shit that you missed the big shit that's coming. Okay. Cause she has so that like, moment. Like she's a message really for us. It was a wake up for her, but it was a wake up for the audience too. Okay. So I'm just, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Cause we still don't know where, uh, we still don't know where, uh, mon is where he went to. Yeah. If he can contact Earth or whatever, did were there were Daxamites left? Like not everybody died, right? Yeah, some some of yeah. them took off. It's like lead. Oop, time to go. Yeah, I'm just wondering. Does that mean now he's king? Well, yes, because his parents. Yeah, his parents. Yeah. But I'm, yeah, but also like I'm thinking if I'm like you know random Daxamite number fifty two, I'm like. Um, <laughs> I'm not, yeah, like I'm not following you and your like crazy deranged family anymore. <laughs> like, like that to me, if that's that's not a reason for a coup d'état, <laughs> like, I'd be like, eh, I'm not about that life no more. Um, <laughs> uh, so, anything else that we want to discuss? I haven't watched the promo for next week. Usually, I don't get a chance to before we record, so I have no yeah, idea. Yeah, I don't know that there was one when I watched last night because I watched it live. Oh, can I just say that they might go back to it, but I did not miss her intro monologue from the beginning of the show. Oh, yeah. I mean, sometimes <laughs> I like the intro thing. Sometimes it gets repetitive. I don't know. Well, and that's why I'm hoping that we move through the season without it. It was actually kind of nice without it. Yeah. Kind of um, like starting with Iris doing her intro monologue instead. Yeah. Um, I now if Barry comes back, he can say with honesty after four seasons, I am truly the, the fastest, fastest man. Alive. I was like, it only took four seasons. That was the other thing that I realized um, uh, when I was looking at the episode numbers, episode numbers mm-hmm. that this is also the third season of Legends. And I think I have forgotten that both of those shows launched at the same time. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, that's also why they had, like, not that great first seasons, because both of them were launching at the same time, and it was just too much. I'm so glad that the only thing that we're getting new this season is Black Lightning, and that that, it's going to be off doing its own thing. Yeah. I'm actually really excited for that. Remind me again, when does that start? Uh, Not till mid-season. Okay. Um, and I'm glad too that I think it's also going to be helped by the fact that it has a whole completely, a whole complete set, a uh, different set of showrunners. Mm. Yeah. Cause I, like I said, last week I thought I missed the flash. I hadn't set up my DVR recordings and I'm like, Oh crap, I got to get my life together. <laughs> So this week I waited to the show start and then set up like the series recording options. Cause I'm like, I just can't go searching for this. Yeah. I have, if anybody is looking for something to help them keep track of all the TV they watch, I have the Next Episode app, and that is super helpful because you you can, I have the widget, so you can do today, and it'll show you what's coming on today, but you can also look at tomorrow and yesterday. The yesterday is, is the one I'm usually looking at, because I'm like, what did I miss yesterday? Tuesdays are ridiculous, you guys. 
Tuesdays is like eight shows. It's crazy. Um, I also need to remove American Horror Story from my favorite shows because I don't watch that show anymore. That show I didn't. Whack. I can't, I'm trying to remember if I finished the freak show one. I think that was the last one I watched. I know Actually, I didn't. I didn't. As soon as they killed um, the baby, not the baby, um, the little person mm. character, and the way they did, I was like, fuck this show. Yeah, I just, I can't do American Horror Story anymore. It's just, and even if it starts strong, it, mm-hmm. it just never finishes strong. So there's no point in me getting excited about a season. I just can't do it. The first two seasons were the best to me. And I, after that, I was like, eh. Yeah. Sometimes Ryan tries too hard. Oh, you know what? Actually, the season that I did watch and I really enjoyed was the um, the last season, the the where it was like a show within a show. Oh, I didn't see that one. And... Uh, Andre Holland was on it that season as well. I love Andre Holland. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, that, that that was actually a good season. It was, like, a really interesting concept, yeah. and I watched every episode. Um, anything else? No, I think, we, I think we got it covered. All right. Well, um, thank you guys for leaving feedback. Really excited for this. I just think they've set up some stuff again. 22 episodes we'll see how they do it i think they have a lot to work with they just you know take it all the way there get 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 deep give your actors something emotional to play because they have great actors i think we all recognize that but the casting is great melissa she's a good actress um kyler i mean kyler comes from gray's anatomy so we know those mofos can cry. Um, and then, you know, David can act. I just, there's, there's Lena. I, I love that actress. Oh, speaking right. of, yeah. mm-hmm. um, there is a show. I saw it on Hulu the other day, and I'm so glad it's on Hulu. It's just one season. It's a British show. I think it's uh, half hour episodes. Um, I saw this show years ago when I was in London. I just happened to like randomly watch an episode when I was at my friend's house. And I was like, what is this? Um, It's called Dates. Hmm. Um, Each episode is about uh, two people going on a date. And it Hmm. has great uh, casting. It's like all these British folks that you love. Una Chaplin is in it. Um, Gemma Chan is in it. And Katie McGrath is in it. And actually her character is uh, dating, goes on a date with Emma Chan's, uh, Gemma Chan's character. Can we talk about the fact that I'm so slow, I forgot to connect the dots that Una Chaplin is Charlie Chaplin's, I think, what, granddaughter or Mm great-granddaughter? Yeah. No, I think it might be niece, actually. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, I love Una Chaplin. I mean, it's, Chaplin isn't that uncommon of a name that I don't think he should um, immediately draw that conclusion, but I get it. <laughs> but yeah, it's a great show. It's on the whole season is on Hulu, so it's a it's a quick binge. Um, Katie McGrath is on it, and I love her. Um, yeah, so check that out if you have Hulu. Um, thank you guys. This has been fun. Thanks for We're back. Me. We'll be back next week. Yes, for episode 302, Triggers. <laughs> I know. I'm just like, interesting. Um, I, we can, haven't watched the promo, Who's so triggered? we have nothing. <laughs> Who's being triggered? Exactly. Huh? Who's being triggered? What's happening? This, this is their gun episode. Oh, <laughs> wait a arrow. minute. I did see the promo for this. <laughs> I'm, I'm lying. I did see the promo for this. Okay. Because it... Kara was getting her ass like handed to her. Ooh, interesting. Yeah. Oh, I just saw who the guest star is for next week's episode. It's uh, Yael from uh, Jane the Virgin. Got nothing. <laughs> oh, you don't watch Jane the Virgin? Oh, she's um, she pays Petra on Jane the Virgin. I like also how Supergirl has guest stars from the other CW shows. Like last season, they had Ravi from um, iZombie. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, the I, yeah. I like that they have like in inner inter network guest stars. 
<laughs> I think that's nice. It's it's mm-hmm. random, but nice. Like I kind of understood Ravi a little bit more because I think uh, I zomb- I Zombie also films in Vancouver, where they film Supergirl. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'm pretty sure Jane the Virgin uh, films in LA, so that means they had to bring y'all up for that. Should be interesting. I'm excited. Triggers. All right. Um, so we will see you guys next week. Uh, I will have a post up probably, if not the evening of the show, the next morning, because I think we're going to be recording Tuesday nights now. So we will talk to you guys soon. Bye.